So um, as we get started today, I just want to briefly go over what the agenda is going to be. Uh, we're going to do a brief introduction of the, the forum as well as key staff that are going to be a part of this work. Um, and then we're going to talk um, extensively about the fellowship um, and this new opportunity that we are providing for our community. We'll also briefly talk about the application itself and just um, give some clarifying comments um, around that. Um, and then we want to take a good portion of time of this hour to just have question and answer time. I know there, there may be questions around what does it mean to be a policy entrepreneur? What does that look like? Qualities, expectations, what we're we trying to look for. Um, and so just wanting to open up space and time for folks to ask questions. Um, and then we'll just wrap up with some last reminders. As a reminder, um, as we are going through uh, the presentation for today, feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. Um, and then once we also get to Q&A time, we can go off mute as well uh, to have conversation with each other. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, I want to introduce the team um, that is going to be a part of uh, this fellowship. I'll start with myself. Uh, my name is Amber Jones. I am the Managing Director of Policy Impact uh, for the African American Leadership Forum, and I work in our policy research and data uh, position. I've been here, uh, department, I've been here at the forum since last June. Um, prior to that, I was a public safety policy advisor for the governor and lieutenant governor, Tim Walls and Penny Flagingen. I've spent over a decade in community organizing, engagement, advocacy work um, here in Minnesota. Um, I've studied African American studies and political science, and I'm currently studying just, uh, theology, justice, and reconciliation um, for my master's degree. Um, so I'm really excited to have come to the forum at this uh, juncture after I left state government. I really want to focus on how to grow um, the policy expertise um, and direction within our community as uh, African Americans here in Minnesota um, to really advance the systemic um, needs that we have and to dismantle inequities. And so uh, when this idea came into the organization to create a fellowship, I was very excited about what we could do. And so I'm very excited to be a part of this work and be able to manage this uh, fellowship on behalf of the forum. Um, I also work underneath Leandra Mitchell, who is our Chief Insights Officer, who I believe has joined us. If she's able to come on home, because I know she's traveling, <laughs> it'd be great to um, hear you briefly introduce yourself to uh, the room today, Leandra. If not, then we can move on. But if you're able to, that'd be great. Hi, Amber. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am off camera because I am in the airport, Doug, but I wanted to welcome you to this info session. And as Amber said, we're very excited about this new chapter in our work and excited to engage with you and give you the skills and the tools and the access that you need to be powerful advocates for Blacks in Minnesota. Now, turn it back to Amber. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leandra. So in Leandra's work, um, we are also incorporating outside of public policy, policy impact, um, market research, data analytics as well. Um, and so uh, we are really just trying to focus on ensuring that the work that we are able to produce here at ALF can be data-driven and research-informed. And so that's going to be a, um, also an important component of the fellowship as we move forward. Um, so what is ALF? What is the uh, African American Leadership Forum? So we are a community innovation accelerator. Um, we empower Black communities to imagine and create an equitable future for themselves. We are really focused on Black-centered solutions here at ALF. 
Um, and our ultimate goal is to improve conditions where Black excellence thrives in all its forms um, by implementing breakthrough collaboration and coordinated action. Um, we are doing a lot of work right now to really focus on building leaders um, and developing leaders, um, most notably through our Josie R. Johnson Leadership Academy, which applications close for that this Friday if you are um, potentially interested as well. Um, also, um, building discourse in our community around key issues that are impacting um, Black community members and bringing Black leaders to the table, um, doing research design as well to really come up with innovative solutions, um, and also in this work as well, uh, driving policy action. And so this is an exciting time to join the organization. Uh, we introduced and welcomed our new CEO, Adair Mosley, who was previously at Pillsbury United Communities last fall. And he has really hit the ground running to really transform and take the form to the next level, um, to really be um, an authoritative voice in the conversations around racial equity and justice, around dismantling disparities, around um, really imagining a future where Black people are thriving in our state. And so um, this is a really exciting um, space of change and growth for the organization. And you will see all different things coming from the forum this year that um, even outside of the, our policy work that are going to demonstrate um, this new chapter that we're in at Al. So, and obviously our Policy Entrepreneur Fellowship Initiative is all a part of this collaborative leadership work. All right, so let's get into the meat of today's conversation, which is really about talking about this fellowship and really breaking down where are the key components. So I first wanna talk about what is a policy entrepreneur? I understand that when you hear this term, even when I first heard the term, I had some questions about what a policy entrepreneur is or it can be, is it mean someone who owns its own business? Um, someone who, you know, are, or starting other, like, what does that mean? Um, so I really wanted to break that down initially as we're going into talking about what the fellowship is going to look like and uh, who we're looking for as a result. Um, so policy entrepreneurs utilize innovative ideas and non-traditional strategies to influence society, create opportunities, and promote desired policy outcomes. So it's really about a mindset and approach to the work. Policy entrepreneurs are waiting for opportunities to strike. Um, they are really intentional about how they can bring in other types of ideas um, and, and approaches to policy work that may not be the traditional, you know, I am a lobbyist at the Capitol type of experience. Maybe it's their lived experience. Maybe it's those of their family members. Maybe it's those that they have experienced in their work. Um, in their communities, um, also in their education. Um, but we're really looking at folks who can be persistent in pursuing those innovative ideas to advance policy strategies. Like you do not give up, you don't stop, you don't quit, you are persistent. Um, like, as I mentioned before, you embrace your lived experiences as authoritative in the work. Um, and we'll even talk a little bit more about as we're looking at qualified candidates, we're intentionally being broad about what is deemed as an authoritative experience um, and what can make you a viable candidate as a fellow. Um, you are not afraid to take risks, to ask critical, critical questions, and to improve not just the work that we do, but how we do it. Um, I think that's also really important as well, that so much of this work that we're doing to advance systemic change um, is not just about what policy we're trying to advance, but it's also the way in which we get there. Are we being inclusive of those who are directly impacted? Are we um, democratic in the way that we're moving and shifting power? Um, are we able to reimagine the way we do things and step out of what has always been the way that we do things, right? And so um, if you have these type of competencies or if you are asking these critical questions um, or wrestling with these things um, in your own lived experiences, wherever you're coming from, I want to name that as skills and competencies that we're looking for as we are naming who is a policy entrepreneur. Um, in addition, I would highly encourage folks 
to um, look up uh, this example of policy entrepreneurship. And we're actually working really closely with this organization as we are constructing our own iteration of the fellowship. And that's called The Next 100. So if you go to thenext100.org, um, you can see how they have built out their model and how they are bringing in all different types of individuals to diversify the landscape when it comes to policy work. Um, research, development, and advocacy, um, and how their experiences are directly tied to the work that they're doing to advance policy solutions. Right. So I wanna talk briefly about the fellowship at Glance, just some key components, um, top line things to make sure that you all are tracking. So the Policy um, Entrepreneur Fellowship is an opportunity for Black leaders with a passion for advancing transformative change to develop innovative policy solutions to improve the lives of Black Minnesotans. So this is really an opportunity for us to invest in our community um, and really invest in leaders who have this passion and have been trying to advance this work in different ways um, to really advance those um, innovative solutions, policy solutions, systemic solutions that will improve our community. This is a two year experience. Um, we want to start tentative, tentatively this June um, and it will conclude in June, 2025. So two year experience. Um, so that means at the end of the two years, your time at ALF will conclude. Um, and then you, you will have to look for additional you know, work elsewhere. And so we just wanna be very clear upfront that this is not a permanent full-time um, opportunity. It's temporary for two years. Um, it is also full-time employment. Um, I want to make that very clear because when you see the word fellowship, you can see all different types of fellowships. We have another fellowship <laughs> at the forum um, with our, our Josie R. Johnson Leadership Academy, which is not full-time employment, it is a six-month cohort experience um, that's really focusing on developing your leadership. Um, but this is a full-time job. <laughs> and you will be compensated accordingly. You will have, um, every fellow will have a $75,000 annual salary. So from June 23, 2024, you'll earn 75,000 and then the same in 2024 to 2025. Um, and you will um, have access to the same benefit structure that all full-time employees at ALF have. Um, and that information is on the job posting, um, including unlimited PTO, access to health, dental, retirement, um, and other benefits that um, the forum staff um, who work over 30 hours a week are able to access. There are also going to be some professional development components, both for the group as a whole, for the cohort as a whole, and then also opportunities to build personalized professional development plans according to your needs, um, and also access to funds um, as as available as well alongside um, other staff here at the forum. Um, but we also want to ensure that all of our fellows are particularly um, able to demonstrate proficiency in policy research, development, and advocacy. Um, and we will make sure as we are uh, screening our candidates um, and going into the interview process and making selections that we're able to take stock of where people are on that journey and make sure that we are creating offerings that can meet those needs where you are. Um, and then finally, as this is a full-time opportunity with the forum, we are requiring either residency within Minnesota or relocation to Minnesota. So we are definitely open to national candidates, um, but it will require a relocation to the state of Minnesota um, in order to uh, benefit from this experience. All right, so next slide. So once again, <laughs> what to expect? This is a full-time job primarily. Um, I wanna make that clear because sometimes people can go into fellowships and it's mostly about learning, building skills, and maybe you do a capstone project at the end. This was going to be a, mostly a professional fellowship um, with some learning components included as I mentioned earlier. 
Um, in addition, you are going to be self-directed. Um, as I spoke about the competencies for policy entrepreneurship, they take initiative, um, they are persistent, they move with action. And so we are really looking for candidates that can demonstrate being self-directed. Um, you are bringing the policy interest and ideas to the table, um, even though maybe you haven't designed the policy all the way down to the minutia, but you have an idea of what you um, want to do and because we do not want to self-define that for our fellows. So we are looking for people who have the idea and that can bring the policy interest ideas to the table and then Alf can bring the strategy and the resources to help actualize them. In addition, um, policy solutions that are developed in this fellowship will be incorporated into Alf's forthcoming Black Agenda for Change, um, which we will be developing as an organization collectively. And so this is also an opportunity for fellows to have their ideas elevated to an institutional level and to get um, exposure and access to all different types of uh, decision makers and communities and also have the strength of an organization with the stature of the African-American Leadership Forum behind you. Um, and I know that that can, that can, especially being in this work, having institutional support can be incredibly um, critical to just gaining more access um, and uh, like that rubber stamp uh, to be able to get in the rooms that you're looking for. And so um, I also want to make sure to name that as well uh, as something to expect. So just to wrap up this section to talk more about what we're looking for in ideal candidates. Um, first and foremost, once again, you have identified a policy issue or interest area that you are passionate about. Um, and, you, uh, and it has a systemic impact for Black communities. And so I, I really want to name that because there can be some really great ideas that may be more community directed or interpersonally directed. Um, and that's great work. We are looking for public policy issues that can have a systemic impact. And so really making sure you can name that in your applications will be really important. Um, you can draw from all the experience that you have, whether it's professional, educational, lived experience, your community work, your volunteer work, if you work in business, if you've done advocacy, um, all these things are instructive um, and they are valuable and you can draw from them to identify and advance your policy ideas. Um, once again, ideal candidates can embody the characteristics of policy entrepreneurship as shared before. And you can articulate the need to be proficient in these areas of policy research, development, and advocacy. We really want to make sure that people can understand that in order to take their work to the next level, maybe they need to grow in these areas or they know these, um, these skill sets are needed um, in order to achieve your goals related to your issue area. So that is just talking at high level about the fellowship itself. And now I want to just talk a little bit about the application process. So as of right now, applications are open um, on our website and you can submit your applications today. I know some have already submitted them and we are incredibly excited. Um, and those applications will be open through Wednesday, April 19th. Um, as far as our application materials that we are accepting on this first round, it is required that you submit a resume. So you can submit your resume that details your professional volunteer, all the different types of experiences that you will want us to know about um, that are going to be instructive for how you may show up in this fellowship. I think that is incredibly important for us to know. And sometimes, you know, you may approach applying to a job and you only write like, I'm only gonna put all of the th places I've worked for full time. Um, and we're saying be very intentional about tailoring your resume to fit the needs of this fellowship for us to really be able to see the scope of who you are and the experience that you have. In addition, on the, on the um, online application that you have to fill out, please complete that application. There are also um, short answer questions, short essay questions um, at the end um, where you answer the question in 250 words or less. I am highly encouraging applicants to fully answer those questions. Um, please take the time and 
Think about all the components of that question and make sure you're adequately answering them within the given word counts. That's gonna be incredibly important for screen moving forward. Um, but I also know that people might want to share additional materials to better, to, to better tell their story. And we are certainly open to additional materials, whether that be cover letters, whether that may be PDF portfolios of your work accomplishments, or if you have publications or things of that nature. Maybe you want to send us links to different websites, maybe that you have created or press highlights detailing your work or other online portfolios of work. We are certainly open to um, receiving all of that information, but what is required is a resume um, and the complete online application, including those short essay questions. And um, the reason why we want to do that on the first pass is to really give people a standardized opportunity to showcase themselves um, and be able to really democratize on the front ends um, what, what we're looking for in screening. Um, so after, we, um, after our application period closes, we'll screen um, applicants and then invite people to interviews. Um, and from there, we will continue the interview process until we select our top three candidates for the inaugural cohort. So at this time, I'm actually going to stop sharing so I can see folks' faces and um, open up for question and answers. I see a couple of questions in the chat. Um, the first is, will there be several rounds of interviews? Um, that will be determined by the, uh, the process for selection based on the candidate pool, based on the needs of the interview panel to be able to identify who will be the top candidates. There will at least be one round of interviews. Um, I did receive another question that came to me directly. Um, so is every fellowship member, fellow, expect to create or develop their own policy or is it collective? Um, I think our expectation is everyone is expected to create their own, um, not collectively. So thank you for that question. Are there any other questions that people have? I want to have ample time for folks um, to ask. Will there be opportunities to submit additional portfolios and items that support our candidacy if we have already submitted our application? Yes, we're certainly open to that. Um, will fellows be engaging in work within the Alliance of Alliances and the eight core focus areas? Thank you for that question there. There is a lot of things shifting even with the language. Um, so Alliance of Alliances is um, sunset language. United by Black was the new language. That language is getting sunset. <laughs> So I think what we're focusing on, if you look at the application, there are some policy interest uh, issue areas that were initially identified on that like drop down to choose what you're interested in. Um, but we also are we also offer room to detail your own policy areas. And so um, we're long story short, we are saying that nothing's off the table when it comes to focus areas. Um, but we are listing some initial ones of interest for the forum based on previous work and then based on um, kind of the direction of our, uh, our um, CEO, but we are certainly open. Um, it looks like it was asked if we're gonna email the slides. Yes, we are. Thank you for that, Brittany. Um, can a fellow currently be or looking to seek office? It's a great question. <laughs> I, I, I guess it depends on the elected office itself, um, just because depending on the office, that might also be a full-time commitment, like a city council member or a commissioner. Um, and for that reason, we will probably um, not want to consider that person because we need folks to be full-time with ALF at the same time. It's different if you're doing something like the state legislature or a school board member or something like that. Um, where that's not necessarily a full-time commitment, but I will also take that conversation back to our team to, to kind of, you know, clarify that and, and formalize that a little bit more. But I will stress the nature that this uh, fellowship is full-time. And so we need a full-time commitment. Um, how many will be selected? Thank you, Ed. Um, this is Ed McDonald, uh, previous director of the council, just wanted to give give all honor as a former staff member. Nice to see you. Um, three three uh, fellows will be selected. Um, 
Would you recommend that applicants review the application, pre-fill their answers and alter them document? Yeah, I, I think that might be, if that is a good workflow for you to review the application, then work offline on your questions and then come back and submit. You have literally two more weeks to submit. So you have time. Um, I think that will be um, a great tip. Thank you, Mark. Amber, it looks like Patrick has a question. Oh, okay. And raised, yeah. Patrick, go ahead. Thank you so much and um, good afternoon. I'm, I'm just curious and, and I'm gonna be quite frank and uh, vulnerable in this question. I think in my work uh, in traditional public health and human service settings with the county, they're very um, white centered, right? And so the experience is quite different and for folks that are change makers and want to push for continuous improvement in those efforts where especially people of color are consistently hit uh, with a lot of pushback. And so I guess my question is, what does encouragement, empowerment, uh, support look like within your organization for fellowships who are applying? Um, and what, do, what does that look like? And how do you all kind of conceptualize uh, how that will be deployed to each selected um, yeah. candidate? Thank you so much for that question. And just to name the fact that, you know, Black people don't get the experience, the opportunity to really showcase their excellence. Um, demonstrate their leadership and be supported in that, right? Or we may be asked to do that, but not really asked to do that. Um, so thank you so much for the question. And what I love about being at the forum is that coming in, everyone's like, we're all leaders here. Take initiative, um, lead, demonstrate your, your abilities here. Um, we want to ensure that our community feels empowered in the work that they're setting out to do. And particularly what I think is so great about this particular opportunity is that we're asking people like, what are you passionate about? What is your idea? How can we help you? How can we help you actualize this work? Um, and for me personally, as someone who is going to manage these fellows, that has always been my approach to leadership and to, to supporting leaders, to uh, managing folks. It's like, I want to ensure that you feel comfortable in your work and your leadership and that you have to ro the room to express that. And so, um, yeah, so I, I, I would say like, for one, the culture of the organization, I think is very much focused on letting leaders shine. Um, we have our chief brand officer here, uh, Mark Watts, and if there's someone who wants to see you shine, it is Mark, okay? Like, and so um, just really excited about that culture that's already in the organization, but also particularly with this fellowship, since it is going to be really led um, and directed on what the interests are of the fellows themselves, um, that there is certainly going to be room for that. So thank you, Patrick. All right. Um, I'm going to hop back into the chat briefly because I saw a lot of activity going in there. Um, oh, sorry, y'all. I was reading one, then dropped down. I'm wondering what other work will be required to be complete. I'm referencing statement of the position full time primarily. Um, so essentially, as far as I think you're asking Jacqueline about like outputs of work. Um, so the idea is that um, you're going to be taking a policy idea, you're going to be researching and developing it, you will probably, you will likely be writing types of policy memos or papers um, as we are developing the resources that we are looking to disseminate out to decision makers. Um, and then also opportunities to advance the work, uh, opportunities to advance your policy, policy solutions at different levels of government, and even think about campaign strategies around that as well. Um, and so it, it's really those key areas of research and development and advocacy will be some of the key work products. And as mentioned earlier, um, policy ideas that are going to be developed in this fellowship will be incorporated and our Black agenda for change. So it'll be also part of the institutional strategy around our advocacy as well. And you are going to get support from the institution as well to do that. So thank you. Um, uh, Stone asks, what does the timeline for the application process look like? So our goal is to be able to, and we asked this on the application, can you start in, I think it was January, uh, June 12th. Um, so we're hoping to be able to make our selections by then if, if we have found the right candidates. Um, so that's kind of the window that we're working in. 
Well, fellows be engaging in the collecting and streamlining of public political public data and data sets in the research conducted? If so, is there specific software that ALF will be utilizing? So we are um, going to be working with research partners um, to collect data. Um, fellows will not necessarily need to collect that data um, unless that is part of their research process, but we will have institutional resources available to help support that. Um, we are not looking for an age bracket. We are really prioritizing the experience. Um, and I see that Leandra answered that question. We are really prioritizing the experience, the ideas, and the initiative of our candidates in our selection. So thank you. So we will not, um, I'm reading this question from Paul, we are not going to start reaching out to candidates who have already submitted until after the application uh, closes. So thank you for that question. Um, are the hours flexible or set? So um, I will share that we have a hybrid work environment here at ALF. We do have in-person work days from 10 to 3 on Tuesdays. Um, also on Thursdays with a flexible option, um, but we do mostly our on-site collaboration from 10 to 3 on Tuesdays. Otherwise, the rest of the week is um, flexible. You can work in the office, you can work remotely, so on and so forth. So we have a hybrid work environment. Thank you. Um, no, Jacqueline, this is not going to be a lobbyist position. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, I would say you can compare it more to like a policy analyst um, or a policy, kind of like a policy analyst slash like director. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tom. Um, I will uh, defer to our job posting because I just want to make sure that I don't get the benefits wrong. And then my operations team is going to be like, you got the benefits wrong. But on the job posting, when you go to apply, you can see at the bottom of the posting all of the benefits that ALF has to offer. And you, okay, I went through all the chat. Does anybody want to come off of you and ask questions as well? <laughs> oh, I got another one from Patrick. Um, will there be additional resources and funds available for research? Uh, we'll have to talk about that in the budget. <laughs> but we do have professional development resources available for um, our team, for our fellows. Um, thank you for that question. And then I'll come to Jacqueline who has her hand raised. Um, we are going to ensure that as far as the adv what advocacy looks like, um, we will be, you know, have to work within our 501c3 status. Um, but there's so much that we can do within that around issues-based organizing and advocacy. So I'm not too um, too concerned about that. Typically, when you are stepping into the C 501c4 space, for example, you're doing more directly partisan work. And as we are a nonpartisan organization, um, we want to be able to do work that can engage multiple um, political parties and, and not really be specific on that. So thank you for that question. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you have your hand raised and you're still on mute. Okay. Um, oh, no problem. We'll come back to you. Sharika, um, if you could, de can you specify what you mean by state? Because as someone who's worked at the state, I have different definitions of state job. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, like, um, maybe Hennepin County um, mm -hmm. or um, Council of African American Leadership Heritage. Um, like those kind of state jobs. Okay. Because I'm yeah. just wondering, because I already have a job within the state system. So I'm just wondering, are the benefits kind of in, you know, some of them sound different or yes. will I Thank still you. be in the system, so to speak? Or 
Thank you for that question. Um, I'm glad I asked uh, for it as a clarifying. Um, we are a non a, a independent nonprofit organization. Um, so if you are coming to Al full time, you are leaving the state enterprise or the government enterprise to come work for us. So um, our benefits are different. I know, especially as that relates to um, retirement and things like that, I know that will be probably the most significant change um, if you are like accruing towards a specific, you know, pension system like thing. Um, so it, as we are an independent nonprofit, you will be leaving the state system um, or the county system. Thank you. Um, Patrick, see your hand up again. This is a really random question, but I'm just I'm I'm curious, and so I felt like I have to ask. Uh, but do do does your organization currently utilize uh, research tools like Qualtrics or Atlas AI or SAS? And if not, um, I I am just curious, so I know in my mind, and I and I need to do the necessary research to see the cost associated with those tools. Yes. <laughs> um... We are not, we are building our research apparatus, um, but we are currently, you know, exploring relationships with different research partners. Thank you. Um, Nate asked, will we need to be in the state if selected? E oh, when will we? Yes, by the start of the fellowship would be ideal, which is uh, in mid June, if we select oh. our candidates on time. For sure. And then I also wanted to tell him that uh, a lot of those apparatus, those programs that you're talking about, they're free. So um, mm -hmm. there are opportunities to use them if that's what you choose to use. But there's a lot more that's better. So cool. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nate. OK, let's try Jacqueline again. Good afternoon, all. Um, I was wondering, as you were speaking about um, creating um, the policy and creating the policy um, on your own or alone, what if there are similar similar policy that um, another fellow is, is working on or has the idea of as well? Mm -hmm. Is Does that, you know, constitute that, you know, they work together? Because it sounds like when working separately, we're creating silos. And so I just wanted to kind of mm -hmm. touch a little on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I would certainly say that I think that will most likely be dictated by the candidate pool that we receive and who we deem as top candidates. I certainly wouldn't say that we're not going to choose, like, for example, if if by far our top three candidates included two candidates that work in criminal justice, like, we're not, we're probably not going to say we're not going to pick them, but we also want to be um, also intentionally broad about who we could bring on um, and the different uh, policy areas that they could embody. Um, and also thinking about the, the way that ALF wants to continue to move forward in this policy space and really embracing the holistic nature of Black people, ensuring that we are open and, and advancing, whether it's climate justice, right, or other, you know, other issue areas that people may not um, think that ALF has had, you know, much work in in the past or much exposure to. And so um, I will say that uh, this, our applicant process will largely dictate those decisions for us once we get down the line. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I want to add on one piece. And if, and I see what you're saying about if, um, Two individuals or just um, multiple candidates work in one career field or one area, but um, like for me, and I know I'm probably not the only one, um, I have um, worked on policy within um, aging services for for our elders, for our seniors, um, from being you know a caregiver had been for ten years, still in with my mom, but having to do a lot of advocating with that and finding all different resources and pushing back at the system on things that aren't. I've actually been been successful in helping some things look differently at say for that, but also in the education realm, and then looking at also um, child abuse and, and, and neglect and, and co-occurrences. And so when that kind of has that surround, I was just kind of thinking mm -hmm. in that way. Again, that's why I was kind of asking that question. So if someone, you know, came on and they had those other, you know what I mean, it's per se areas, so not just looking at the per se candidates and the spaces that they currently encumber, but if they're in multiple areas, thanks. Oh, oh yes. I think I think what's most important to articulate is the ideas that you're advancing. 
Um, and that's and that's why we name like really being clear about all the different types of experiences that you can bring into the work um, to inform uh, your passion area, that policy area that you want to um, pursue. And yes, it can, it can fall on multiple intersections of bodies of work issue areas um, and how that is making a systemic impact on our community for sure. Can Thanks. I just add Amber? Yeah, that, go ahead. Um, regarding the siloization, the objective is not to work in silos, it's work independently, but there will not be silos. Uh, the work is actually shared. You will intersect with other divisions within out that yes. will support your work and that will uh, promote your work that will also partner with you. But we are very, I think, deliberate in making sure that we don't have multiple fellows working on the same issue because we want to make sure that you are adding capacity to our advocacy work yeah. so that we can attack multiple issues at the systems level. So yeah. it's, you know, we will also, um, our team will also work on, like as Amber said, the policy, uh, the Black agenda, agenda for Change, but your research, your focus area will add to that. So as opposed to us maybe focusing on three areas, we may focus on six because we have the three fellows who are working on mm -hmm. very specific policy for two concerned years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for that added sure. information. It makes a lot of sense for me to now break that down in my brain. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks a lot, Amber and Thank Leandra. You. I was like, no, thank, thanks for the tag team. Um, uh, so another question in the chat was, uh, can we create policies tied to existing statutes? Yes, um, because we know so much of important policy work is not just about creating new policies, it's about changing existing ones to better suit the needs of our community. So absolutely. Any other questions? We still have some time before we close. So definitely want to give you all all the room, space and room to ask what you need to ask of us. I just wanna thank Elf for creating the space because this space um, is one that is needed to advance, you know, the, the work for um, our community to um, have better quality of success through all, all, all areas, all strands, all branches. So thank you. Thank you so much. I wanted to, I wanted to say thank you as well um, because we know that we have a lot of white people at the table making decisions for our communities, for our children. Um, and a lot of times we have not been at the, uh, you know, been at the forefront or at the table to make decisions uh, regarding a policy that will affect the communities and the, you know, where we live and uh, systemically, we just haven't, they've made all the decisions for us as black people. And I'm very grateful to know that there is something in place where we can uh, start coming up with our ideas to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Cause that's you. what policy is. Policy is uh, decisions and rule making um, that will affect you and your family ultimately in your community. Thank you so much to Shira for that. And you and I both know that is real. People are making decisions on our behalf every day. Um, Mark did ask, um, and I know that there are some people in the room that did apply already. Um, if people want to answer the question around how you felt the application process went for you on the front end, and then we'll transition. I was using the chat, but I guess I'll go ahead and just speak on it. Um, you know, I've already applied and found the navigation of the application process quite easy. Uh, the only thing that I found is that it would, and that I would suggest to folk is that, you know, you just ensure that you set some time aside to critically think about the questions that are being asked and uh, to complete the application process and just be mindful about the those documents uh, that need to be uploaded. They, there were prompts for that as well. Thank you so much for that positive feedback, Patrick, and um, for those tips. 
Great. Um, so uh, Ed asks, are policy change efforts that focus on state constitutional changes allowed? Yeah, absolutely. I know that there are some that can have um, very tangible impact on our communities. So thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so much um, for once again coming to this space um, and asking really, really great thoughtful questions. Um, and I'm also really excited based on this conversation to see so many of your applications come through over the next several weeks. Um, fellowship applications, as far as next steps, um, are due on Wednesday, April 19th, 11.59 p.m. And so please ensure you get your applications in before that time. You can uh, visit alftc.org backslash policy dash entrepreneur dash fellowship to access the landing page on our website with more information, most of the information that we already covered here today um, and uh, access to the application itself. Um, so thank you so much. Um, as Brittany had mentioned in the chat, um, thank you so much to our colleague, uh, Brittany Travis, that's been managing the chat. Um, there will be communication going out after today. So if you came into um, the session later um, or late, um, a recording and the slides will be emailed out to our listserv. So if you are not already on our listserv, please go to alftc.org. You can scroll down to the bottom of our webpage and become a contributor to ALF. And so you will have access to that information via email when it comes out. Um, in addition, I also want to plug, maybe you are interested in the fellowship or other opportunities here at ALF. And we are currently also accepting applications for the Josie R. Johnson Leadership Academy. I know I saw a couple of uh, recent graduates from the fellowship here on today's call. Um, so that is an, also another opportunity to exercise your leadership, um, Black leadership in particular. Um, and so you can go to alftc.org uh, backslash leadership, um, and you can apply for the cohort that's also going to start this summer um, as well. And so thank you all so much for being here today. As per usual, you can uh, reach out to us on our website. Um, you can email us at info at alftc.org. Please follow us all on social media. Um, stay, you know, stay in the loop. Keep us also informed in the work that you are doing so that we can be supportive of you and community as well. So thank you so much for your time. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and you all have a great rest of your Wednesday.